Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Uh, hit the like button and please subscribe. It does help my channel out so much. And thank you. And um, my first article here is Biden pardons all low-level federal pot convicts. Convicts. Let me get that correct there. I've had quite a night of of uh, information here. <laughs> Okay, President Biden took dramatic steps on October 6th to overhaul U.S. marijuana policy. Finally acting as a pledge he made during his presidential campaign two years ago. First, Biden pardoned all people convicted of marijuana possession under federal law between 1992 and 2021, a move that affects at least 6,500 men and women, plus several thousand more in the District of Columbia. Second, he said that his administration will review whether marijuana should be reclassified so that it is not in the same Schedule I drug category as heroin and LSD. While many states have legalized medical and recreational marijuana, it remains illegal at the federal level. Full national legalization or discriminalization of pot would require action by Congress. And Biden stops short of saying he favors any more than reclassifying marijuana possession to a lesser offense. But the executive actions moved the federal government in the direction of the states that have legalized pot, pot and eliminated or reduced criminal punishments for simple possession. Too many lives have been upended because of our failed approach to marijuana, he said. It's time that we right these wrongs. Criminal records of marijuana possession have created needless barriers to employment, housing, and educational opportunities. Now, I think I've did this video before, but I'm going to go over it again. So please bear with me. But pardons don't really wipe the slate clean for people with criminal marijuana possession convictions on their records. According to the Justice Department, however, a pardon does help by removing legal disabilities caused by a conviction and should lessen to some extent the stigma that many people with convictions on their records face. DOJ uh, points out that the pardon recipients will still be required to disclose prior convictions on any form that requires some information, some such, in, requires such information. However, they may also disclose that they received pardons. Erasing a criminal record requires expungement, a court-ordered process. DOJ says those seeking expungement of a federal marijuana possession offense should contact the federal district, co district court where they were convicted. States have varying procedures for those seeking expungements. If you are trying to expunge a state-level conviction, DOJ suggests contacting the offices of the governor or attorney general of your state for assistance. Order doesn't affect those in state prisons. It's important to point out that the pardons most affect people who were once in prison on federal pot possession charges. Only a handful of people currently behind bars will win their freedom. According to the United States Sentencing Sentencing Commission, just 149 people were in federal prisons for simple possession of marijuana in 2021, a decrease of more than 2,000 in 2015. Although numbers are hard to come by, far more are serving time for possession in state prisons, which are not affected by the pardons. Biden is encourage, encouraging governors in those states to follow the issuing pardons. Biden's pardons will be issued through an administrative process overseen by the Justice Department. Those people eligible for the pardons will receive a certificate that they have been forgiven for that offense. What will the impact be? Hmm. The scope of Britain's pardons is unusually broad, but the bigger impact may be what it signals. It is the most significant step a president has ever taken to loosen federal marijuana laws. With the midterm election only weeks away, 
Some Republicans criticized the move as soft on crime, calculated maneuver to draw more young people to the polls, and presumably vote Democrat. But at the time when two-thirds of Americans say they think marijuana should be legalized, Biden's actions may also represent an acknowledgement that federal marijuana laws need to be more in line with what Americans believe. Oh, really? Whether Congress will follow through, however, is a question for another day. I should say so. Alrighty. Well, Dem Leader Penn's message from County Jail. This is kind of sad, but very serious. Very serious. An Indiana mayor has admitted to drinking and driving following a car accident on Saturday night, according to a statement from his office. Fort Wayne Democrat Mayor Tom Henry's office issued this statement on Twitter after reportedly being booked in the Allen County Jail. He was released Sunday morning on his own recognizance. I want to apologize to the residents of Fort Wayne and my family for the poor decision I made to get behind the wheel of a vehicle after drinking at a local function. I accept full responsibility for my actions, the statement said. I'm relieved that no one was hurt in this accident. The Fort Wayne Police Department handled this situation with professionalism, followed all of the correct procedures and protocols, Henry added. Henry also addressed media on Sunday to express his sorrow and embarrassment. I am terribly embarrassed by the poor decision making that occurred last evening, Henry said in a media briefing. I am sorry that I put our police department in that situation last evening. I know better. I will be held accountable for those actions and future legal proceedings. I respect our legal process and I will adhere to decisions made by our court and I will accept those consequences. The mayor noted he would not address additional details due to the ongoing investigation. As your mayor, I will not hide from my actions nor will I make excuses. But today I ask you, please respect my inability to speak to the facts of the matter until I am fairly and appropriately adjudicated, Henry said. Fort Wayne Police Department Information Officer Sergeant Jerry Webb noted, Jeremy Webb noted that no police records would be shared for the ongoing investigation according a, to a WANE TV report. John Perlich, a spokesman for Henry, also released a statement to NBC News regarding the incident. Mayor Tom Henry was involved in a motor vehicle crash last Saturday, Perlich told the outlet. Upon arrival, officers determined that the mayor appeared to be impaired. After tests were conducted, that was confirmed. Henry is currently running for a fifth mayoral term in 2023 against Republican Tom Didier, D-I-D-I-E-R, Didier, a current Fort Wayne City Council member. I have known the Henry family for much of my life, Didier shared in a statement, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, Didier, D-I-D-I-E-R, Didier, shared in a statement following the mayor's apology. Cindy Henry actually was one of the first people to encourage me to run for public office. These relationships go beyond politics. I would encourage everyone to pray for them and all those involved in this accident and I hope that no one was seriously harmed. In this article, Domatic Mayor apologizes for drinking and driving after car accident, The Daily Wire. It's kind of sad, but He's not making excuses. He's not trying to get out of it. And you got to give that man credit for that. You sure do. Yep. Well, I'm going to slide over here now. And this man here must have been really shocked. 
two men shot outside of GOP gubernatorial, gubernatorial candidate's home. Representative Lee Zeldin, Republican of New York, who is currently running for governor of New York, revealed in a tweet that there had been a shooting outside of his Long Island home on Sunday. Two men were reportedly shot during the incident, which occurred at around 2.18 p.m. near Zeldin's home in Shirley, New York. The Republican congressman stated in his tweet that he and his family were safe, but noted that a bullet had landed just 30 feet from his children. Thank you for all who reached out with your concern regarding the two people shot this afternoon outside my home. Zeldin tweeted, Michaela and Ariana were at the kitchen table doing homework. One of the bullets landed just 30 feet from them. They acted very swiftly and smartly in response. Thank God they weren't hit. The New York Post noted in a report that the shooting is being investigated as a gang-related crime. The incident had taken place a few houses down from Zeldin's home, and sources have said that it had nothing to do with the congressman, who has made his tough-on-crime position a key component of his campaign. Just happens to be irony, one source told the New York Post. Zeldin released a statement regarding the incident, writing, Crime is out of control. Like so many New Yorkers, crime literally made its way to our front doorstep. My 16-year-old da daughters, Michaela and Ariana, were at our house during homework, doing homework, while my wife Diana and I were in the car, having just departed the Bronx Columbus Day Parade in Morris Park, the statement continued. After my daughters heard the gunshots and the screaming, they ran upstairs, locked themselves in the bathroom, immediately called 911. They acted very swiftly and smartly every step of the way, and Diana and I are extremely proud of them. Yes, definitely. The two individuals who were shot were laying down under my front porch and the bushes in front of our porch. My understanding is that they have been transported to area hospitals. I do not know their identities, Zeldin added. The Republican gubernatorial candidate's opponent, New York Governor Kathy Hochul, H-O-C-H-U-L, Democrat also sent out a tweet about the shooting. I've been briefed on the shooting outside of Cong Congressman Zeldin's home, she wrote. As we wait more details, I'm relieved to hear that the Zeldin family is safe, grateful for the law enforcement's quick response. According to the Suffolk, S-U-F-F-O-L-K, Suffolk County Police Department, detectives have confirmed that the two individuals who were shot are receiving treatment of their injuries. This is not the first time that the Republican congressman has experienced the consequences of the high crime in his state. During a July campaign event, Zeldin was attacked on stage by a man with a weapon. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yep. Crime is really out of hand. Very much so. Well, I'll be back maybe a little bit later. I'm not going to say for sure. But um, God bless everybody. Have a safe night. Stay well. And remember, you are a blessing. Got my cam button here, and I'm ready to wave. I'll be back later. <laughs>